In part one of this video, uh, we talked about the bedrock concepts of how to assess which tables you need and what their relationships are. And this gives you a pickup from that last video. These were what we designed, what we decided were the uh, relation, the, the tables that were related and what their relationships were. So you've got three one-to-many one -many relationships and one many-to-many. -many. And then these are the columns that need to be represented in the database, at least the minimum number of columns that you'll need to be sorted into all of these tables. So this video will show you how to actually design the database. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the course section uh, relationship. And I'm going to uh, click on this. I'm going to give it the course table. And its primary key is course ID. That's PK. And then I'm going to also bring on here a uh, section table because it's said, and I explained in part one why you need that, so I won't repeat it. We have a section table, section one. And then it says here that course and section are related in a one to many relationship. So we grab the relationship line. The one side with the double hash marks is the course ID. And the, it's got to light up. The other end goes in section, automatically giving you a free foreign key. And it says in here that it's a mandatory in the lab, um, that it's mandatory that you should have a, you know, each section can't exist without a course. And that makes a lot of sense to me. I mean, you can't offer a class, which is a section, and not know what course it, your actual what class, what course you're actually talking about. If you're not sure, there's a distinguishing feature between a course and a section which you need to understand. So if you haven't watched part one, make sure you do it. I'm just going to make course ID required so that you have to have a course ID in the section table. So that's handled this relationship. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do instructor section. And I'm going to create instructor. You'll see in your business rules that instructor is related to section. I'm going to go into the columns. It's going to be instructor ID. And uh, that's going to be a primary key. I'm going to put it over here, and I'm going to relate instructor to section. Pull a relationship and line over. Each section will have only one instructor. That's part of what we decided right here, right? Each section has one instructor. But each instructor can teach many sections. So the instructor go ID goes in here. I'm not going to make I'm not going to go into the section table and make instructor required because we want you want to set up a class or a section as we call it without having a instructor assigned to it. And the next relationship we want to do is the room section. So I'm going to create a table. I'm going to call it room. And I'm going to give it a room ID. And I'm going to pick up the relationship and I'm going to say that each section is associated with one room. And each room will have many sections. And it's nice if you can move these around so that the relationship lines don't cross. It makes for a much cleaner looking design. So I'm going to put that right here. I'm going to move this over. And I like it if you can stretch it out too so at least you can you don't have the zeros butting up against each other. Okay, last thing is student section. That's a many-to-many -many relationship, so you need a junction table. So I'm going to create, uh, I'm going to move course up here like this. I'm going to create a junction table right there, and we're also going to need a table for the student table. So what we do is on table here, we go to definition. This is going to be the student table, and it has its own student ID, which is its primary key. And then we're going to have a, a student section table, which is the junction table. And the way you create that student section table is through joining relationships together, not by typing in foreign keys. So I'm going to grab a relationship line, and I'm going to put one on student, and I'm going to put the many end student section and then put a foreign key in there 
and then we're going to put the one on section. We're going to put the many here. And then we're going to put that in. By the way, this, this section one, I don't know how that got in there. Probably because I had other stuff in here. This section table has a column called section one. I just want to rename that section. Same with this one just so it's not confusing. There's only one section. In fact, I'm going to call it section ID. And I'm going to call this section ID. There you go. So now we have the mostly completed design. At least all the relationships between the tables are established. Now, what you have to do is you have to figure out, using those normalization rules, what columns goes in what table. I mean, student first name and last name obviously goes in the student table. Course code and course name and course description and course credit hours, well, all that is associated with the course table. However, if you put course time and course days in the course table, that would create a third normal form violation because the course day and the course time does not depend on the course. You need to rename these section time and section day and put them in the section table. That way they're in the correct table. <clears throat> the rest of them, <clears throat> instructor first name and last name and also the, the room number and room capacity, I'll let you decide where those go. But they're pretty straightforward as to where they go. I think you'll you'll get them, you're smart people. And that is how you design the database for the week five iLab part A. Thank you.